What's up guys, Spencer here. Today we're going to be going over logistic regression. Logistic regression will be used in many different types of industries, all the way from consulting to tech to marketing, you name it. Whenever there's something that can be predicted with a categorical outcome, such as a yes or a no, we can definitely use logistic regression and create a model logistic regression to predict such an outcome. So let's get to it. There are three different types of logistic regression. They're all pretty much the same thing, but with a different categorical outcome. First, we're gonna have a binary logistic regression where I was mentioning earlier, you can just have two related outcomes such as a true and a false, a yes and a no, that related type outcome. Then we will have a multinomial logistic regression where we have more than two outcomes it could be yes no maybe so or i don't know something along those lines the third one is going to be an ordinal logistic regression where there is an ordering factor to your specific output so think in terms of like hotels you can have a rating of one star two star three star four star five star where each of those stars or each of those levels determines a hierarchy related to each other. They all can be predicted using a logistic regression. So some see. examples of using a logistic regression can be used to answer some questions like these. Can this person receive a bank loan? Will this person purchase this given product? Will I receive a yes or a no to this specific answer? So however you want to phrase a particular output and find an answer to, or find a probabilistic answer to, then logistic regression will be the easiest model to understand and interpret and also to implement. So as always, we want to make sure that we clear our workspace using this command in R. We want to set our directory to whatever location our data currently exists, and we want to load in our data set. So in this case, I'm using the crime data on where we want to predict whether or not a particular person will be committing a certain crime. Note that zero is always no and one is always yes in terms of binary outcomes. So let's take a look at what the data looks like. We have a bunch of features that are everything is a numerical variable and we will want to be predicting what our target will be either a zero or one and provide a probabilistic tendency or a prediction on whether or not given all these factors will that person be committing a crime so after we took a brief look at that at the string uh, of the crime data we want to look at the summary of the crime data uh, just get a general sense if there's any NAs, uh, and it looks like there are no NA variables or uh, rows or observations, um, and that's generally a, generally what you would want to see. So, let us look into why we would use logistic regression instead of our typical multilinear regression or a simple linear regression. So, I already pre-wrote some code on just taking a look at what our data looks like. So I have on my X axis, six variables. So they'll just be the index. I will be predicting the target or not predicting. I'll be showing uh, the target variables, the first six, and I'll just be labeling them as the index probability of committing a crime and probability of committing a crime. So this is what our data looks like. Uh, just the first six variables. If we were to predict using a linear model, uh, our line will look something like this. I also pre-wrote this. It'll look something like this. Once we create our linear model, our Y tilde X, and we want to print it or uh, plot it on our given graph over here. This is what the linear regression will look like. And let's zoom that out a little bit so you can actually see it. Uh, Obviously, this linear regression is not capturing all the points since our outcome is a categorical output, either a zero or a one. So we want more of an S type curve in order to predict or better predict what our variables will be uh, in terms of our given uh, data. So going into the back end on how logistic regression works, let us take a look at our logistic regression steps that I put together. So first, 
we we'll always start with a linear regression equation because logistic regression is essentially a derivation of linear regression. So starting off with our typical linear regression equation, we have our y is equal to our beta coefficients. Next, we want to plug in our y, uh, our y variable into a logistic function. We do this because we want to essentially normalize our data between zero and one to essentially come up with a probabilistic scale and just to essentially normalize all of our data. Thus, we will just transform our data such that it fits our criteria, uh, our response variable be being between zero and one. And this is what our logistic function looks like. We have an exponent raised to our y variable divided by one plus uh, exponent raised to the y variable. Also, note that this logistic function follows a sigmoid function, uh, where essentially the sigmoid function is our logistic function, but it will essentially normalize or scale all of our data between zero and one, as we can see right here. Uh, this is just a, uh, a written out equation on what our sigmoid uh, regression and our sigmoid function will look like. Uh, this is, these two are equal. You just multiply your exponent um, top and bottom and you will, you will get the same value where the negative disappears. And so the odds and odds ratio is uh, somewhat uh, important to understand. Uh, this just determines how or like the confidence on what a given probability would be. Uh, so for example, if I were running a race and the odds stacked uh, with me or the probability of me winning is 5 to 2, then the probability of me winning is 5 divided by 7. And so the odds ratio, we will be using the odds ratio in the next uh, further further down the road, but essentially if our odds ratio is greater than 4, it's really high. If it's lower than 1 fourth, then it's pretty low in terms of that outcome happening. So we would essentially plug in our odds ratio into something what we call the logit function. To plot our y variable, we would essentially plug in our odds ratio into this logit function what we have over here. And this is what we will plot on our y axis in order to determine what our model will essentially be predicting. So uh, last but not least, uh, we will essentially be estimating our coefficients, something called uh, maximum likelihood, on where we, there's a huge derivation from, uh, from where this came from. Uh, I can probably do a different video on this, but this is the log loss function on where our, our coefficients will be approaching the estimated value oh, will be approaching the real values or the real probabilities and so once we actually have our model we'll be using this set of criteria to evaluate whether or not our model is superior to its preceding models or other different types of models uh, based on its own like its its base model in the next video, we'll be going over how to implement the logistic regression function in R. And we'll be going more into how to actually predict with R and what determines what is going to be the best type of logistic regression model there is. So I'll see you in the next video.